Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course Nutrition for the Family This is the second module that is dietary recommendations and we are studying the last lecture of this unit that is nutrient guidelines and food exchanges i am dr jaspreet kaur presently working as associate professor in government college for girls ludhiana punjab affiliated to punjab university chandigarh and this project is funded by dth swayamprabha mhrd new delhi in the last lecture we were studying about the nutrient recommendations for indians a report of the export group given in 2020 by indian council of medical research national institute of nutrition in which we studied about the guidelines for populations for individuals and then we studied about the dietary guidelines regarding macronutrients regarding fiber regarding water and regarding elderly and in this lecture we shall be continuing the same recommendations and we will see how this committee has recommended balanced diet for the individuals and then we will study about the food exchanges we will study with various type of food exchange list and then we will see how we can use these exchange list for menu planning so let's start so balanced diet for sedentary man with nutrient content value is another contribution of this committee so if we see this table what they have done they have given the nutrient requirements that means how much of energy protein visible fat calcium iron zinc magnesium vitamin a then uh, beta carotene b1 thiamine b2 niacin then b6 vitamin c folate and b12 all these requirements how that person can meet his needs if he is taking vegetarian diet if he is taking non vegetarian diet what should be the estimated average requirement and what should be the rda so according to these guidelines the this right side of this table indicates that how to identify the amount of nutrients and how to fit it according to their lifestyle and on the left side of table if we see these are the guidelines which tell if a person is sedentary that how many cereals and millets he should take this is the amount which should uh, be taken daily that means uh, the cereals and millets should be 275 grams daily and pulses legume and flesh foods could be 80 grams daily he should take green leafy vegetables 100 other vegetables 200 grams and roots and tubers 100 that means the vegetables should be 400 grams in total and this person should take fruits 150 grams daily he should include milk of 300 ml daily and fats and oils as we know that person is sedentary so his requirement are 25 grams daily and he should take oil seeds and nuts Uh, such as gingerly seeds and peanuts they have uh, uh, given the suggestions that what kind of oil seeds and nuts can be included and it is 30 g daily and spices that means 10 g it can be taken so uh, along with that if we see that the total uh, protein in the diet how they have calculated and they have given this suggestion if the person is vegetarian then pulses can be replaced with the animal food that means the person take, can take egg meat fish and chicken if he is non vegetarian and if the person is vegetarian then he can take 80 g of pulses only along with that they have given how the retinol is derived uh, from the uh, beta carotene 
and they have also recommended that in the cereals and millets category 275 gram per day the 50 percent of contribution should be in the form of whole grain that means so that it contains sufficient amount of fiber in the diet and same is uh, so these are the highlights and if we see they have given balanced diet equations or the table for other categories also for example if the person is moderate worker the, if the person is physically active so let us see how these guidelines they have changed they see the cereals and millets they have been increased from 275 to 360 pulses and legume it has increased from 80 to 120 but other uh, green leafy vegetables are 100 other vegetables are 200 and roots and vegetables are again 100 so that means there is no change in vegetables there is no change in fruits or milk but fats and oils uh, the ration it has been increased by 5 grams so this is how they have recommended how we can make our diet healthy and similarly this is the balanced diet for sedentary woman again if we see uh, it is recommended that she should take uh, cereals and millets as 200 gram daily and similarly her pulse requirements are 60 gram but the other requirements are same but for the fats and oil since she is a sedentary worker so uh, her requirements are 15 grams and rest all the requirements are same we have just studied the nutrient guidelines to plan balanced diet where we saw the RDI for an adult, elderly and the recommendations regarding the number of servings to be included from each group. But you must have felt that we have different food choices and we do not want to eat same food over and over again. And to address this issue, let us study the concept of food exchange system. What is food exchange? It is food classification method and it is needed to achieve balanced nutritious meal plan. It provides us variety and flexibility. So uh, it contains specific portion sizes within a range and it allows us to choose the foods which we like and at the same time providing the nutrients what our body needs. The exchange groups, they gather foods that have roughly same amount of carbohydrate, energy, protein and fat in that exchange group so that we can exchange it without making uh, much of the alterations. And one exchange is approximately equal to another in terms of basic macronutrients that is carbohydrate, protein, fat and energy. This system contains six food groups and each group of food is placed in one type of food exchange list and this exchange refers to portion of food in that particular food group. When we talk about exchanges, when we use exchange that pertains to one portion of that food. Now these food exchange lists are uh, fruits, vegetables, milk, starches, fats, meats and meat substitutes and the foods in each individual group they have similar amount of nutrients as we know and the sweets and other carbs they are counted in the separate group because they provide only empty calories and along with that we have some free foods also. These are the foods which contains less than 20 kilocalories per total serving. So let us explore these food exchange lists. Why do we need food exchanges? We need food exchanges to have flexibility in our meal planning and to add variety in our meals. For example, if a person wants to eat a parantha, he can very well exchange it uh, with two idlis or one dosa because uh, this is how this food exchange system works. And within the limits of the dietary recommendations, these exchanges, they help us in planning right diet. 
and this is a tool to plan sustainable daily diet now let us study about these exchange list and see how these food groups and these exchanges work for us let's understand the first exchange that is cereal exchange so one cereal exchange means one portion of cereal exchange one portion of cereal if we take one cereal exchange it will provide us approximately 100 kilo calories of energy it will provide us 3 grams of proteins it will provide us 21 grams of carbohydrates and 0.5 grams of fat now these is uh, are the contributions from each serving or each exchange of cereals so how to see what is the portion size for example in this list if we see the, it has been written as food ingredient uh, and along with that we have the weight that is a raw weight of that food and then we have cooked portion of that food how th this portion uh, will look when we see it as a cooked uh, serving in our thali so for example the food ingredients are whole wheat cereal and then rice corn flakes quinoa oats vermicelli then millets bread and semolina so the serving of uh, or the exchange of cereal would be 30 grams in most of the cases it is 30 grams but for corn flakes say it is 28 and for vermicelli and millets it is 30 and uh, uh, for bread it is a 40 uh, and for uh, semolina it is 25 so this gives us little guidance that how much a uh, portion size or how much of that exchange can be taken for example uh, here if the person wishes to uh, substitute his roti with bread so what will happen to get a uh, 100 kilo calorie he can take either one chapati which is of 6 uh, inches diameter or he can substitute it with 1.5 slice that means a normal um, uh, bread it uh, if we if he takes one and a half uh, slice of the bread it will be uh, equivalent to same amount of uh, nutrients and similar is the case with the rice for example if the person wishes to take rice instead of chapati so he can take half a cup of cooked rice and it will be providing one cereal exchange now similarly let us see what are the other exchanges are and so yeah, along with that sago it is uh, has been kept in a separate category because it does not fall same uh, it does not give same contribution as the other exchanges uh, from the cereals and millets so uh, 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 you can see one exchange of sago it provides 88 kilo calories 22 grams of carbohydrates and it contains negligible fat and protein so sago raw weight of 25 and cooked weight of 1 cup that uh, makes one exchange coming to the pulse exchange list so after cereals let us see what is the contribution from this exchange list so uh, it will contain 100 kilo calories just as cereal exchange it will give us 17 grams of carbohydrates 75 grams of proteins and 0.5 uh, grams of fat so again just like that the food uh, which are included here are different type of dals which we take it could be urad dal chana dal green gram moong gram red gram bengal gram horse gram or lentil so all these 30 gram of raw weight is one exchange so the cooked weight would be around half katori half medium katori so if we are taking half katori of dal that is uh, one exchange it will give us this much of nutrients coming to the second part that is soy and soy products so it cannot be considered as a part of pulses because uh, it has some different contribution so uh, if we take one serving of soy or soy products it will give us again 100 kilo calorie it will give us 100 grams of carbs it will give us 
just 0.1 gram of fat and it will give us 15 grams of proteins. That is why this group has been categorized uh, separately and it is not included with the pulses. So, uh, it includes soy chunks, soy granules or soy milk and uh, this is the raw weight and this is the cooked weight. So, uh, if we take one exchange uh, say of soya chunks, it contains 33 chunks and we can take one cup of uh, soya chunks in any form, it, we will get this amount of uh, nutrients. Now, let us talk about milk exchange. Here, milk exchange list contains uh, different type of food items say buffalo milk, cow's milk and uh, then curd of cow's milk. And along with that, one person may uh, wish to take skimmed milk or uh, he uh, may not be interested in taking milk. He may like to take, uh, say, paneer. Uh, or, uh, so that is why this exchange will uh, tell us that each exchange will give us 110 kilocalories and it will give us 7 grams of carbohydrates, 4.5 grams of proteins and 7 grams of Fat. So, this milk exchange list tells us that it is high protein as well as it is high in fat. So, uh, for that one exchange will be now uh, if we are taking buffalo's milk, you can take 100 ml that is equivalent to half a cup. But if we are taking cow's milk, you, what you can take? You can take 150 ml that means 3 fourth cup. You can take more than that. If the person is taking curds, so 185 gram or 3 fourth cup will be giving same amount of contribution of these nutrients. And if we talk about skimmed milk, skim milk, it is very important because it will give only 30 kilocalories. It will give 2.5 grams of protein and 4.5 grams of carbs. It is not the same as what we have seen in the above list. So that is why if the person is fond of taking milk, he should be recommended or he can choose the skimmed milk so that he can take that in larger amount. But if the person is interested in taking paneer, he can take that paneer. So 50 grams of paneer is equivalent to one milk exchange list. Now coming to meat and poultry, many non-vegetarian people, they wish to substitute uh, their uh, food items. So uh, each meat and poultry uh, exchange will provide us 70 kilocalories. It contains negligible carbohydrates. It contains uh, 11 gram of protein per exchange and it will give us 3 grams of fat. So Again, let us see what are the food items, uh, say chicken, beef, fish, it contains um, egg. As we know, egg white and egg yolk, they have different type of uh, contribution. So uh, how they have given, see chicken is 50 gram, one piece. That means uh, if we, the person is taking a half a cup of uh, vegetable, uh, half a cup of uh, dish, so it will be providing this many uh, calories and uh, protein and fat. So beef is 65 grams, fish is 50 grams, and egg white is 25 grams, and egg whole is 20 grams. So they will be providing uh, this amount of uh, uh, nutrients per. Uh, uh, serving. Now coming to green leafy vegetable exchange list. So here as we know that uh, in the balanced diet we have seen it is recommended that the person should take large amount of uh, this exchange. So uh, if we see the contribution of nutrients you will be uh, uh, amazed to see that it provides only 30 kilo calorie per exchange. It will give us 4.5 grams of carbohydrates. It will give us approximately 3 grams of protein and uh, just 1 gram of fat per serving. So what it uh, is included in the green leafy vegetable exchange list, we can take spinach, we can take mustard leaves that is sag, then mint, then 
cabbage greens, cauliflower leaves, coriander leaves, drumstick leaves, and amaranth leaves. All these are in the range of approximately 100 gram of raw weight and approximately half to three fourth cup of cooked vegetable, which can be taken. Now let's talk about our favorite roots and tubers. So uh, what uh, comes in these roots and tubers? It contains carrots, potato, onion, radish, and sweet potato. So here again, the raw weight is in the range of 100 to 150 grams. For, but for sweet potato, see, it has been reduced to half. So uh, each portion size of these uh, uh, food items, they will provide us 40 kilocalories of energy, uh, 10 grams of carbohydrates, 0 gram of fat and 1 grams of protein. So for example, if the person is taking 100 gram of carrot, the cooked weight would be 3.4, 3 by 4 cup, that is um, a cup of cooked vegetable and half cup cooked uh, potato or onion. And if the person is taking radish, so he can take more. And if he's taking sweet potato, he will have to choose less as uh, they will be providing 40 kilocalories. Say, for example, if the person says, I wish to eat more, I want to eat more, I am hungry. So that, that person, he can replace uh, his carrot, 100 gram carrot with 160 gram of radish. Or uh, if he wishes to eat uh, potato, and then uh, radish can be uh, 160 gram. That means he'll have to reduce the portion. He can take 100 gram of potato in case of uh, uh, instead of radish to get same amount of uh, nutrients. Coming to the category of fruits, each exchange will provide us 45 kilocalories of energy. They will provide 10 grams of carbohydrates, negligible fat and 1 gram of protein. So how much fruit a person can take? See, uh, we enjoy different type of fruits, some like mango and other one likes melon. So here, uh, these exchanges, they will give us variety. For example, if the person uh, wishes to eat apple, he can take 75 grams per serving. That means the half big apple will be uh, making to one exchange of uh, fruits. And he can take 185 gram of musk melon or he can take 75 gram of mango or he can take a half banana, say uh, 40 uh, grams of banana. He can take 85 grams of uh, grapes say 18 to 20 um, grapes he can take or if he wishes to take guava he can take one medium guava he can take if he wishes to take lime then he can take one big lime or if he wishes to take papaya he can eat more he can take 217 grams of papaya that means he can take four thin long slices of papaya and uh, if he wishes to uh, take pear, then uh, he can take 107 grams. That means one medium pear can be eaten. Or if he wishes to eat peach, then he can take two medium peaches. So uh, according to the likes and dislikes of a person, the person can swap them for each exchanges. For example, half big apple can be replaced with one big lime or it can be replaced with one medium pear. So this is how these exchanges work and they will provide same amount of uh, um, energy, protein, carbohydrate and fat. Now let's see what this sugar uh, exchange includes. This includes uh, the items such as sugar, jaggery, honey, sugar cane juice and jam. So each of these exchanges will provide us 20 kilocalories. It will provide us 5 grams of carbohydrates and it will have negligible amount of protein and fat. So uh, how much amount of uh, exchange a person can take? For example, uh, he can take uh, for one exchange 5 grams of sugar, jaggery and honey. He can take 38 uh, milliliter of uh, sugar cane juice as one exchange. So if the person wishes to take sugar cane juice, so what he can do, he can uh, exchange it for one teaspoon of sugar or uh, five gram of jaggery or five gram of honey. 
So um, all these things are the cooked weight. Uh, for example, sugar one teaspoon is equal to uh, five grams, and one small piece of jaggery, or one teaspoon of honey, or one fourth cup of sugar cane juice, or one teaspoon of jam, they have equivalent uh, calories. Now uh, talk. Let's talk about fats and oils. And just like uh, sugars, we have different sources of fats, and each exchange will provide us. 45 kilocalories of energy, 5 gram of fat, and again negligible proteins and carbs. So this will include butter, refined oil, ghee, or cream, 40% or uh, heavy cream or mayonnaise. So uh, if we wish to see ke how much cooked weight is there, how much ready portion is there, so a person can take one teaspoon of butter. Or one teaspoon of refined oil, or one teaspoon of ghee. All of them, they have same amount of calories. So people say that if we are not taking a desi ghee, so we are taking probably less fat or less calorie. It is not like that. All of them, they have similar uh, calories and a similar contribution of nutrients. So if the person is taking light cream, which is 40%, so he can take three teaspoons. And if he's taking normal cream, then five teaspoons. And then if it's taking mayonnaise, that it it is equal to one teaspoon. So how do we use the food exchanges? We first of the all, we will find that the food in the question it falls into which food group? We will identify that food group. And then after that, we will calculate what is the serving size of that food, which can be replaced with the other food. And then we will plan it according to our recommended dietary intakes. So now let us learn how to apply these exchange list. As we can see, this is a consolidated table which tells us if we take cereals and millets or pulses and legumes, if we take egg white, egg whole, chicken meat and fish, green leafy vegetable, other vegetable, roots and tubers, fruits, nuts, fats, sugar and milk or either it is skimmed milk or cow. We are one portion is going to give us this much amount of energy, this much amount of protein, this much amount of carbohydrate and this much amount of fat. For example, if we talk about cereals and millets, one portion we had just studied, it gives us 30 grams uh, of uh, per exchange. It will give us 100 kilocalories of energy, 3 grams of protein, 21 gram of carbohydrate and 0.4 gram of fat. So same is the contribution from each of these exchanges. Now we will see how we can change these food groups into real meal planning now into real exchanges. So we will calculate a meal plan with the exchange list now. So let us see how many servings or how many exchanges of each food we can take when we are planning a diet which provides us approximately 1800 kilocalories. So as we can see, we have listed all these food groups which contain cereals and millets, pulses and legumes. We are giving egg white in the boiled form. We are using green leafy vegetables, other vegetables, roots and tubers, fruits, nuts, fats, sugar and we are giving skimmed milk. So how many servings of each uh, uh, this food item can be taken from each food group? Cereals and millets for 1800 kilocalorie diet to give us approximately 50% 50, uh, 50 of the calories, we are giving them nine servings. So as we know, if we, um, uh, we just saw in the previous slide that each exchange or each serving of cereals and millets will provide us 100 kilocalories. So nine um, servings will provide us 900 kilocalories. And we know that each exchange was providing us 3 grams of protein. So that comes out to be 27 grams of protein. And uh, each uh, serving, it was providing us uh, approximately 20, uh, one per, uh, 21 gram of uh, carbohydrate. So uh, if, uh, it is 189 and uh, coming to the fat, it was giving us just 0.4 grams of fat. So it comes out to be 3.6 grams of 
fat. So uh, this is how we have calculated that uh, this person we are uh, planning a diet for is consuming uh, two servings of pulse and legumes and uh, these are the different servings and to get this 1800 kilo calorie diet plan and uh, it will this diet will provide 77 grams of protein this will provide approximately 309 grams of carbohydrates and 34.1 gram of fat we have just seen in the table that how we can categorize each food and we can divide them into different exchanges but these are all exchanges uh, and they are written in the food groups so let us translate those food groups into real foods now so let us say to meet those 1800 kilocalorie requirements the menu would be like early morning the person takes 150 ml of milk he takes a soaked almond 7 to 8 then for the breakfast he can take uh, poha that is two katori that means cereal exchange and then he can take uh, one curd 100 gram that is milk exchange and in the mid morning he can take ground nuts uh, that is a half handful and he can take a half fruit that means half serving he can take lemon water and in the lunch what he can take he can take salad a small plate that is from other vegetables and he can take three chapatis and rice one serving so that is cereal exchange and spinach vegetable one katori so that means uh, he's taking two exchanges of green leafy vegetables and along with that he can take curd he can put a raita that means he can put either ghee or a khira uh, and uh, this uh, can be uh, of 100 grams then evening tea by using 500 ml of milk then he can take along with that boiled chana or steamed sprouts this contains pulses group one katori and then for dinner again he can take three chapatis he can take one dal katori and he can take vegetable uh, which is a half katori and after that he can take uh, his uh, swedish uh, just like fruit custard kheer semia one katori which can take uh, 100 gram of milk so that is uh, how we can fit in those food exchanges into our healthy meal plan so what we have studied in this lecture let's summarize we started with the leftover part that was nutrient requirements for indians a report of export groups 2020 in which we studied about the recommendations uh, during the old age and along with that we studied the what are the recommendations for the balanced diet and then we studied the concept of food exchanges and uh, then we studied about different type of food exchange lists and then we learned how we can use the exchange list for our menu planning in this second module what we have studied we have studied about the dietary recommendations in which we studied about the concept of nutrient requirement and then we studied about the framework of nutrient requirements in which we studied what are the dietary reference intakes the concept of ear that is estimated average requirement then recommended dietary allowance adequate intake then tolerable upper intake level lower reference nutrient intake and then we studied where uh, and how to apply ear and rda then after that we studied what are the different food groups and we studied about their classification that how we can divide them uh, on the basis of uh, their uh, uh, functions inside our body on the basis of their characteristics or the major nutrient which they possess we studied about food guides and we studied about what are the food pyramids then we um, studied about uh, the food plate and then we studied about the concept of nutrition education as uh, a food guide then we studied about dietary guidelines for indians in which we studied 15 dietary guidelines for us and 
in the end of the lecture, we studied about the nutrient requirements of Indians in which we started a report of export group of 2020. And after that, uh, at the last, we studied about the food exchanges. So this finishes our second unit and second module that is dietary recommendations. Thank you very much.